Hello and welcome to another Creative TD production. Um, we are going to cover something pretty interesting in this video. Um, I'm actually going to cover how to do a, a bit more of an advanced uh, rim light. I got an email from one of uh, the viewers and they were asking about how you do a better rim light instead of just a, a kind of a fall off, right? Uh, so I'm going to show that, and then the other portion of the video is going to go over and cover um, how to actually create your own um, uh, CG include files. And what this will do is uh, it'll actually allow you to uh, modularize your shaders uh, a bit, right? It's kind of the first step to um, getting a bit more advanced into your shader writing capabilities um, because it allows you to um, basically store all of your different lighting models in one file instead of having to rewrite them over and over and over again um, in each shader that you create, right? So we actually will start to create a system for our shaders. So what I have here is a really basic scene that I just set up really quick. It's a fresh project. Um, and <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how first to do the um, half Lambert and the uh, rim light, um, the more advanced rim light. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to create our, a new file in here called a CG include file. All right. So let's get started first with the, the lighting model. So let's get into it over here. Uh, so what I want to do first um, is start off by declaring my own um, lighting model. So I'm just going to call this half Lambert rim. Okay. And again, we're going to say inline um, fixed for whoops fix four and we're gonna call this lighting um, half Lambert rim all right that looks right and then we need to declare our um, variables our input variables so we're gonna say surface output s and we're gonna do a half three light dir and a half three uh, actually, yeah, we need we need the view there, so we're going to bring in the view direction, and then we need a half uh, attenuation value. All the defaults that you would find in the Blinfong, um, the built-in Blinfong. Okay, so let's actually first um, do um, the first set of things, which is calculating our diffuse, right? Which is the n.l, right? So what I'm going to do is do a fixed n.l, and this is very similar, or this is exactly the same way that um, I've been doing it all along. Well, not all along. Uh, I think beforehand I just show you how to do the dot product. But now what I'm doing is I'm actually going to use a max function. And it'll basically clamp this between 0 and whatever the highest value of uh, the dot product is. Right. So we're going to do dot product. And we want to bring in the s dot normal. Right. So we're bringing in the objects normal. Okay. And we're going to dot that with the light direction. Right, so this will give us <clears throat> our uh, diffuse lighting. And to, to check this out, we can actually do this really quickly. Let me add a comment here. So we're going to say diffuse lighting. Okay, check this out really quick. Uh, I want to do a fixed four, and we're going to call this our final color. Right, this will be our output. And we're going to say that the final color is now equal to s.aldato, right, because we want to actually bring in whatever modifications we do here into the final color so we're going to do that and then we are going to multiply that with the light color so whatever unity gives us as a light color and we're, we're going to discuss where this value actually comes from in, in just a bit rgb okay and then we're going to actually encapsulate that here and i'm going to multiply that <coughs> by uh, the n.l like so and times the attenuation value and times two all right so then we are going to then return final color return final color like so actually this needs to be final color dot rgb and we need to fill the alpha with something so final color Final color dot a is equal to zero point zero right now. <clears throat> okay, so there you go. 
So that should work. Let's just check our work. Okay, so we're doing n.l. We're getting our lighting. Create a new variable. Fill the new variable with our lighting needs, if you will. Fill the alpha and then return that final color um, to the surface function so we can actually start to modify it. So all these guys should just be fine. So if we save this, all right, we'll go back into Unity, see if we get any errors. Most of the time you do on the first go around. <laughs> so we're getting a, a line 16. Let's see, what we got line 16 in line fixed. Half Lambert rim. Okay, so maybe we actually just change these to fixed values and maybe it doesn't like having the mixed types. See what happens there. Same deal. Okay, I know I'm missing something really stupid. There's that, there's that. The lighting, we got the surface shader all hooked up. Number rim. Maybe just make sure we copy this guy over appropriately. Paste that down. Let's save that and see what happens. No? Um, ah, that's service output. Let's see. That was definitely an error. Yep, there we go. All right, so now we have our basic uh, diffuse lighting set up. All right. So to do the, the half Lambert, so I'm just going to make another comment here. We're going to call this the half Lambert right here. Uh, what we want to do is we want to actually, um, I'm going to say another fixed value. I'm going to declare another variable, so half Lambert. And we're going to say that is equal to, let's do the first step here first, okay? So what we're going to say is we're going to say n.l. We're going to multiply that by 0.5 then add that by 0.5, add 0.5. So basically what we're doing is we're, we're moving it from the negative 1 to 1 up to um Actually, we're moving up the values first. We're multiplying, sorry. <laughs> we're multiplying the values first by 0.5, so everything's getting halved. Then we're adding 0.5, all right? Um, and that will basically um, make the darks a little bit lighter. So let's just see what we get here. So we're, we're going to save that. So I'm going to say fixed. I'm going to replace the n.l with the half Lambert. You'll notice that this will get a lot brighter. All right. Uh, and let me just turn off the receive shadows for now. <laughs> Every once in a while they get all jaggedy like that. So you'll notice now we actually have a very bright um, model. So what we want to do is we want to um, take that to a power of 2. So we'll do that. Put that in there like this. Let's say 2.0. Alright, so now we've taken that to a power. And you can always make a variable of that too if you want. But this is the proper... Um, calculation according to what I read from the Valve website. This is the half Lambert um, model right here that they used in um, their games. Okay, so now we have the half Lambert um, going. Um, one thing I want to do because it's too white for me right now, so I also want to go into my uh, properties here and I'm going to add a new property and I'm just going to add a global tint to the overall color. So main tint, I'm going to call this main tint. It's going to be a rain, or actually, it's going to be a color that's going to be equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5, 0 0.5, because it's a color. Don't forget your commas. All right, we're going to save that. I'm going to copy this guy, and down here, I'm going to say fix for main tint. We're going to save that. And put this main tint, we're going to actually just multiply um, for right now this by main tint. And save that. And let's go back to Unity. So now if we come into our half Lambert, you see that we have a little bit more control over the overall lighting of everything. Um, at least in this, this very simple case. Um, it's just that this was the quickest way to do that. All right. Uh, you don't always want to have that global tint. Right, especially now that we have uh, ambient probes um, and a lot more advanced ways to actually light these things. Having a global tint like this is just kind of 
the weak way of adding a, an ambient value to your whole um, model. So, anyways, let's start doing the the rim lights. All right, so this is going to be a bit interesting. Um, so what I want to do is calculate out two more different dot products. Um, I think one of these you, you have seen before um, doing specular. Um, but what we want to do now is we actually want to, before we do our diffuse lighting here, we want to calculate our half vector. So this the half vector is going to be the halfway um, direction between the light direction and the view direction. Okay, so calculate the half vector. <clears throat> so we're going to say fixed three. I'm just going to call this half vector for now. A lot of people just put H for this, but you know, in this case of doing these videos, you want to be as verbose as possible. Normalize. We want to normalize the light direction plus the view direction. All right, so that'll give us our view, our half vector. And you can actually um, view this. So let's start to um, maybe debug our, or show how I at least debug my shaders. All right, so I'm going to say fixed three, right? Because we need to input a uh, vector three here, RGB. And I'm just going to paste in half vector, half vector, and half vector, semicolon. And I'm going to save that. <clears throat> That way we can actually debug those values, and in this case, break it. So let's see what it said. Too much data in type constructor at line 29. So that means, oh, I don't need to actually do a fix three. I'm sorry, that's already a vector right here. Okay, so we can just say half vector. There you go. So there you go. So we're actually getting our view direction. So you notice how we're getting an actual um, vector three based on the angle of view. So this is the half vector between the light and my view direction. All right. So that's one way you can start to debug whether or not you're getting proper values or not. All right. So then the next uh, steps, what we want to do is um, we want to calculate the um, the specular, basically, it's basically the specular value and the um, n dot h, I think it is, yeah, n dot h, which would be the um, normal dotted with the half vector. All right, so let's start all this. So we're going to do uh, more dot products here, and we what we want to do is a fixed. Um, we're going to do e dot h. Okay, and that's going to equal to the uh, max, again, to just keep it within the 0 to 1 ratio, or range, dot uh, builder and the half vector. All right, that's pretty good there. And then we need to do another one, fixed and dot h. Okay, so this is going to be max zero and we're going to dot the uh, normal of the model so s dot normal with the half vector as well all right so let's actually debug some of these guys so for these guys you notice they're a fixed value so it's a single value like a float okay um, what i am going to do is put in fix three again and just put in e dot h, e dot h, and e dot h, so we can actually see what kind of values we're getting. So you want you want to think of these these values as you know your vectors, but they're also masks, right? You know, it's a it's a gradient that goes from zero to one, basically. So you can use these things to mask out a lot of your different uh, lighting um, solutions, right? So you can start to get creative with how you blend together these different dot products. It's really the kind of the basis for a lot of shaders. Everything kind of starts from these these values and these vectors. Okay, so you can see there that's our um, what is this one? The e dot h. Okay, and now we want to let's look at what our uh, n dot h looks like. So let's save this. So this one's going to actually help us in masking out our rim light. All right, pretty pretty cool stuff. 
All right, so hopefully you can start to see that this is um, going to mask out a lot of our effects that we, we want to do. Okay, so let's go back to our shader here. And let's actually start to calculate our rim light. All right, so we're going to go into after the half Lambert. And I'm going to say rim light for my comments. Just keep it all neat. And what I want to do is I want to create a new variable. It's going to be fixed rim light. And this is going to be equal to uh, one. Oh, actually, I just remembered. I need to um, create another dot product. So let's leave that. I need the uh, facing ratio, basically, or the fall off. So it's going to be n.e. Okay, so we want to take the max of zero to dot plus the normal, right? Because normal, or n stands for normal, e always stands for view direction or i vector. So s dot normal, and we want view direction. So let's test that one out. Paste that down, paste that down, paste that down, we'll save it. So there you go. So now we're getting our facing ratio or our fall off. So what made me think of that is when I want to go do this, it's I needed to actually get that fall off so I could actually negate it. So we're going to say 1 minus um, n dot e, n dot e. All right, so let's actually now take a look at rim light, and you'll see why. So save that. And now we've basically inverted our rim light or our fall off which is perfect so now what we want to do is have a little bit more of adjustment on that so what I'm going to need is a parameter up here and I'm going to call this my rim power all right like that and we're going to call this rim power like so and this is going to be a range and it's going to go from 0 0.01 to 1.0. Actually, let's go to 3 so it can make it really clamped. It's going to be equal to um, 1.5, let's just say, for now. All right, so I'm going to need to pass this to my lighting model here. So I need to bring it into the actual, actual sub shader. So this is going to be a fixed rim power. And now I can actually use it down here to say, to actually raise my rim light to a power so I can clamp it down basically or tighten up the effect. I'm going to say power. We're going to say um, rim light to rim power. And we'll take a look at that. So let's say rim light is already set up. Let's take a look at this now. So there we go. So now we have a control to tighten up the effect. Okay, but still it's just um, a fall off, right? There, you wouldn't really have rim light down here unless you had a light down here, right? So that's what we really want to do. And we have a vector or we have a dot product here that tells us, this one right here, um, where that light should fall off. Okay, so all you need to do now at this point is just take this n dot h and multiply it over that. And let's just see what we get. So there you go. There's a little bit more of an advanced uh, rim light. All right, so the last steps that we need to do, instead of doing all this cool jazz down here, is include it right here. Say rim light. I'm gonna save that. We'll go back onto our half Lambert and everything should even out. We should have light color, we'll have tint. All right, and so that should actually give us a half Lambert with a really nice advanced rim light effect. There you go. You can clamp it down a little bit more. You can see down here in the, the shader preview, it's got where they have two lights. It's picking up wherever a light is now. So um, You'll notice at some point here you get this kind of pinched value. You could probably um, clamp it down, but I'll, we'll play around with that. You can play around with it too. It's just really modifying which values you bring in. So it's probably getting too close to zero or maybe too close to one. Actually, 
2 goes to negative 1, I think that's what it would be. I don't know. Anyways, that is the beginnings of the more advanced <laughs> rim light shader with a half Lambert. All right, so it starts to get way more realistic here. All right, so let's move on to the second part of this, and that's to move all this over to a more modular approach in shader writing. All right, instead of you having to write this up every single time, or maybe you have a Word file or some uh, notepad file or text file where you've stored all these, well, let's actually do this in what they call a CG include file. This allows you to actually declare all these lighting models, right, and bring them in with a CG, CG include uh, declaration up here, which we'll go over in a second, and then you'll be able to declare all of your different lighting models, right? So we can reduce this all by, um, reduce the shader by removing this and moving it into our CG include file. All right, so let's start that. So what I'm going to do to do that, I'm going to go into this uh, shader folder. I'm just going to show in the Explorer here. <clears throat> what I want to do in here is actually create a new file. And this new file is just going to be a text file. Okay. And I'm going to call this uh, uh, custom uh, lighting. And you have to put in an extension of CG INC for CG include. And Windows will complain that it might not be usable, but it will be. So then when we go switch back to um, Unity, it's going to actually import that and You'll notice, really, if you look really closely, that this new file actually has, instead of an S for shader, has CG, which means that it's compiled into a CG include file. So now what we can do is actually load this up into um, MonoDevelop. And to get this started, it's really simple, um, and, but was so much so useful for kind of organizing your workflow. Um, all you need to do is declare an if if def statement. Right, you might not know too much about this, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. But really, just to get it started, you're creating some sort of definition for the uh, system to look for. Okay, so you need to put if and def. Okay, and then what needs to come after this is the name of your include file, all caps, so custom underscore lighting, and then to make sure that this gets included, so it actually reads this file, right? You want to say underscore included, like that. And that'll basically get the system going. So then what you want to do is you want to start a definition. You want to say if this is actually included, then move on to this def definition. So we say define what this is going to be. We're going to say custom lighting included. So now we're saying, like, if this is loaded, then define it as this. And then to close that off, it's kind of like a function, right? close that off, you just say pound sign and if. Okay? And that is how you start this whole system. So basically now whatever we put inside of here, right? So I'm just going to put in a comment here. Whatever we put in here um, will be our custom lighting models. And we can consolidate them all down in this, into this one file so we never lose them. So we say um, declare custom lighting models. Okay? So what I want to do now I'm going to save this, let's go back to here, into my actual shader, and I'm going to copy this. I'm actually going to cut it out of there, and I'm going to paste it into here. And we're going to tab that back and save that. <clears throat> All right. And then we want to save this, and let's just take a look and see what happens, because a lot of times you'll get a lot of errors because things are, are broken right now, right? So let's go back into Unity and let's just see what kind of errors it throws. Just so we can get used to this, right? So it's saying there's a shader error in the surface lighting model half Lambert rim not found. So really it's not actually being able to find this CG include file. And the reason for that is because we haven't actually told the shader to include it, the, that declaration, this these definitions, right, into this shader, right? That's where a include statement comes in handy, right? So you say pound include, okay? And then in parentheses, or in the quotation marks here, you want to actually type in the name of your CG include file. So you say custom lighting dot CG INC. And now we'll save that, and let's just see what happens now. 
see if we get any errors. <clears throat> All right, so it actually is loading up our CG include file now, but it's throwing an error because it's saying that the half Lambert rim uh, lighting model is actually looking for um, this, or it's failing on this function, the power function, and it's because it can't find the variable rim power, okay? So what we want to do is go back to our main shader here. We actually have this fixed rim power still inside of our um, uh, main shader, right? Well, all you need to do is actually declare just the property, okay? And just make sure that you move this over to um, variable declarations inside of the custom lighting um, CG include file, right? So we're just going to say custom, or we're going to call this the um, rim light um, properties. And I'm just going to paste that there. All right, so if we save that, we save this shader. Let's just clean up a little bit of room here. When we come back into Unity, you'll notice that it worked. We now are actually, we've consolidated our shader, right, down to just this. We've moved our lighting model over to our CG include file, and we still have the same lighting going on. So if you actually went to your shader, the property is still passing, right? So the the, this property right here is passing into the CG include file here because we're telling the, sh the shader to include it. And because this is a specific name and we've declared it here, we can now use it inside of our lighting model. Okay. So hopefully that, that all makes sense, right? So one of the nice things you can do now um, is basically take any of your other uh, lighting models, right? So if you, so in my case, I actually have done an Orin Nair lighting model. So I'm going to copy that from a previous file. So I'm going to include this into here. So here's my lighting. Um, we're actually going to rename this to something different. So CTD. <clears throat> I will just call it Orin there for now. All right. And there's a couple of properties I need to import for that. So I'm going to import those. But basically, as you can see here, I'm, I am modularizing all my lighting. So I can actually use my same shader here right and I can actually say now um, or there that should be what it is I'll just copy this right here so it needs to be or there okay so if you're not familiar with or there it's uh, a shading model for cloth okay so you can do that so let's go back and see if we get any errors and we do Imagine that. So, we'll see here. We're getting an error on rim power conflicts with previous declaration at asset shaders custom lighting. Oh, okay. That's just because, um, okay, I've declared it twice. So, if you notice um, here, my custom lighting, I have it declared twice there. I don't need that. <clears throat> All right, that should work. Let's see. Let's uh, see what the real error is here. I'm just going to just space there, space there. Let's just see what happens. Now it says frags are, are exceeds in order to compile. I think, oh, I think I know what this is. <clears throat> so anytime you get, it needs a certain amount of registers. It's because it's not set to a higher target, higher uh, render target. So what we need to do is say pragma. We need to target this to shader model three. I think that'll fix it. Let's just see what happens. Nope. That's always fun. But that's shader writing for you. Let's see what the real error is now. Okay. F lambert rim bad characters in source file nineteen. Hmm, okay, so what was it? Line 19, let's just take a look. Clean. Oh, pragma. Not pragma. <laughs> let's see if that works. Oh, 
find where we Oh, all right, so it worked, okay. <laughs> so it worked. Uh, the only problem is you'll notice, again, to reinforce how we need to create these connections between these two files, we actually have to declare all these as properties. So if we go back into here, I need to declare that one, and this one needs to be, actually I have them already made, so let's just copy them over. All right, so there's all those properties I needed because they were breaking because this shader didn't actually have these properties. They couldn't pass them into here to actually use them, okay? So we'll save that. It's actually good that that happened so you guys could see the break. So there you go. So there is a cloth shading model, all right? And you can change, you know, the intensity of the different falloffs. There you go. It's pretty cool. Anyways, hopefully you guys uh, learned a lot from uh, that. Uh, this is, you know, pretty much the standard for when you start to write these shaders in a bit more of an advanced level. Um, you start to build up your own CG lighting and your, your own custom lighting, your own CG include files, right? So in another video, I'll start going over um, the different uh, Unity CG includes, right? Because you'll notice that they've actually created a ton of built-in um, functions for you, to, for you to use, but you can also create your own, like uh, the hard surface shader guy did. He created a whole bunch of different um, functions that he uses, or he or she uses, inside of um, his shaders. All right, so I just kind of wanted to introduce you to creating your own CG include files and how you can start to modularize your different lighting models. So thanks so much for watching, and I hope you guys. Um, actually, wait, I want to do one more thing here. Just, let's just switch this back. So let's say now I want to switch this back to what's the lighting model? Half Lambert Rim. So all I got to do now is just do that and take that O out of there. And we'll save it, switch back, and we have our other lighting model now. It's a really quick way to change lighting models. All right. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you, or I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks. Bye.